Today we're in Cleburne, Texas for the 2022 Pioneer Days event. I'm Johnny Anderson and I'm standing next to the statue of General Patrick Cleburne, who's the city's namesake and who was killed at the Battle of Franklin in November 1864. During the war between the states, nearly every able-bodied male joined one of eight units mustered in Johnson County, many of whom are buried in the Confederate Memorial Park, now called the Cleburne City Cemetery. 400 Confederate veterans are buried here, some in unmarked graves. They're looked after by the Terry's Texas Ranger Camp of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, who will meet at the event. So let's head over to Pioneer Days and see what's going on. We've made our way to the Chisholm Trail Outdoor Museum, and we're standing outside the Civil War Museum that's also run by the Terry's Texas Ranger Camp. This annual event celebrates the history of Texas and Cleburne, featuring blacksmiths, cowboys, vendors, and entertainment, but the main reason people come out to Pioneer Days is to see the SCV camp and their living history exhibits, and the demonstrations of Civil War weaponry. Let's go inside and talk with Steve Wells, the camp commander. Hi Steve, and uh, thanks for having us out. Can you tell us a little bit about Pioneer Days and its history? Yes sir, I'll be glad to. Uh, this is the 19th annual uh, event for Pioneer Days, and it started very humbly, and it's grown over the years. Uh, uh, we've uh, the David Murdoch was primarily responsible for the uh, development of this. It started out with a, uh, a log house or a log a log house that used to be the uh, county seat for Johnson County in 1854, I think it was. And it was moved on site and uh, renovated. And then uh, things were added, an old schoolhouse where kids were really taught with a chalkboard and a piece of chalk. This actual building here was an old stagecoach uh, building at Godley that uh, set just a pile of rubble until uh, about three years ago when enough money was raised to actually construct this building. And one half of it is our Terry Texas Ranger Museum and we uh, staff that on weekends, uh, including through Pioneer Days. Uh, on Pioneer Days itself, uh, we invite uh, local schools for living history on a Friday, and then on Saturday we have uh, the uh, general public. And so basically it's nine to five. We uh, set up a cannon, as far as our camp itself, we set up the cannons, uh, we have muskets, and we uh, entertain the public and give living history in that way. Uh, during the rest of the time when the museum is open here on weekends, uh, we have anywhere, last year we had I think 1,500 visitors that came through our museum on weekends, plus about over 1,000 at Pioneer Days itself. And this year we're probably gonna have more than that. I haven't done an exact count, but I expect it's probably about 2,000 visitors. And uh, for the most part, it's very supportive. People appreciate us being here, appreciate the history that we can give them about our Confederate ancestors. Um, we have the, the camp, the artifacts and things around the room have been donated by the camp. Uh, I might say that uh, this museum itself was a brainchild of one of our uh, former members who passed in uh, 2019. His name is Robert McMinn. And uh, people all across the state knew Robert because he was our camp surgeon. And he set up a surgery tent at many of the uh, reenactments. That and uh, so he had this uh, brainchild, and we uh, from that we were able to uh, talk with uh, Chisholm Trail Outdoor Museum management, get this museum going. Uh, our members have donated and uh, loaned uh, artifacts, and also. We get artifacts donated from just the general public. Uh, the painting right above my head was a, one of our latest edition. Uh, it's titled uh, Hood's Texas Brigade, and it shows General Lee with uh, uh, General Hood. And it was donated by a gentleman from Glen Rose. And so I'd like to mention the fact that uh, through our outreach through this museum, we, we do uh, and not only inform the public, but also get uh, things donated to the museum. Melvin, can you tell me about the uh, musket that you're carrying? Yeah, this is a Model 1842 Harper's Ferry. Uh, it was originally a, 
a flintlock rifle. It was converted over uh, to a percussion cap, and it, uh, they call this particular conversion a, a Belgium cone conversion. It's a 69 caliber uh, smooth bore. Don't have rifles in it. Uh, these guns were really deadly at 100 yards or less with what they call a bucking ball. It's got buckshot glued to a 69 caliber ball. And uh, when it comes out, there's four projectiles going downfield, <laughs> taking a lot of people with them as they go. Uh, this gun right here, I've had it about two or three years. I ran across it in a pawn shop and the guy had just bought it and he didn't really know what it was. He didn't know it was a Harper's Ferry. And so I was able to buy it from him and I'm really proud of it because Harper's Ferries are kind of hard to come by. So Mike, tell me about the Gatlin gun that's behind you. Okay, this is a, a, a copy of the original 1862 uh, prototype that uh, Dr. R.J. Gatlin invented uh, and uh, the, this is the, the same materials that uh, factory that fabricated them then uh, used the polished uh, bronze and the polished steel barrels uh, of course they didn't stay looking like this uh, very long after they got into the field uh, one interesting thing is that our uh, U.S. government didn't actually purchase any of these during the war between the states. Some of the generals purchased them and they were used at the Battle of Petersburg and they put some of them on gunboats on the rivers. The, uh, this is the grandfather of all of our modern day rotary battery weapons that we have today. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously they got a lot faster and a lot bigger. So that's great. Tell me about the artillery we've got out here today. Okay, the, we've got two uh, six pound field guns, uh, which are flat trajectory type weapons. Uh, they were used right up until just before the First World War from 1841 until then. Uh, other countries continued to use these same guns uh, for years after that even though. That's great, and, and uh, I understand you uh, you built the cannon that's right behind us. Tell us about that experience. Correct. Yeah, I, uh, I purchased the original arsenal drawings and uh, built this cannon according to the original 1841 drawings that the manufacturers were using at that time. Fire. 
This is Johnny Anderson again, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure and like and subscribe to our channel. Well, come along, boys, listen to my tale. Tell you about my troubles on the old Chisholm Trail. Come and tie ya, yippee, yippee, yay, yippee, yay. Come and tie ya, yippee, yippee, yay. I started up the trail October 23rd, started up the